More than 350 new laws took effect on Monday, and a few of them will have a direct impact on health care for all Oklahomans. The Transparency in Health Care Prices Act will require providers to publicize the prices of their 20 most common services. Another new law requires hospitals to allow patients at least one visitor, even if Oklahoma is under a state of emergency, as it was for a large part of the pandemic. And there is good news for the roughly 500,000 Oklahomans who rely on insulin to treat their diabetes. A new law caps the copay on a 30-day supply of insulin at just $30. The bill limiting the cost of insulin applies only to the copay. So what that means is that that price limit applies only to those individuals who are making the purchase when they are insured. So the uninsured will still face the market price for those drugs. And Sean adds that the incoming Senate Majority Floor Leader Senator Greg McCourtney has been at the forefront of health care issues and will most likely guide more legislation to the floor for consideration in the next session. November is National Diabetes Awareness Month, and this week I had the chance to speak with experts from the CDC to discuss an illness that affects thousands of Oklahomans, and many of them don't even know it. Let's begin with an overview. What's diabetes and how many Americans have it? There's type one and type two diabetes. 34 million U.S. adults have it. Um, and the campaign today is talking about those who are at high risk for it, or the 88 million, one in three American adults that have prediabetes. Uh, Dr. Harmon, prediabetes, uh, now, would I know if I had prediabetes? Would I have any symptoms? Well, the scary thing, Rich, is you wouldn't know you have it. You don't have any symptoms. It's not like you have a rash or a sore throat or hurt elbow or something, you just have to know you're in the risk factor category. And those risk factors are being 40 or older, obese, inactive in your lifestyle, an immediate family member, mother, father, sister, brother with diabetes, or if you've been a woman who's pregnant with gestational diabetes, then you have a substantial risk for this diagnosis of prediabetes. Dr. Holliday, if someone has prediabetes, what are the chances they're going to get a full-fledged case of diabetes from that. Do some people not get diabetes who have prediabetes? The good news is that prediabetes can be reversed and diabetes is not inevitable. And so people have the opportunity to change the outcome if they know their risk. And so we're encouraging people to go to the campaign website, doihaveprediabetes.org, take the one minute risk test and know where they stand. I speak for a uh a rural state where I happen to practice in South Carolina, we have a substantial number of diabetics because of our lifestyle, our dietary habitus, and family history, no question of it. I'll also mention that the risk factors for prediabetes are those for unhealthy life in general, lack of exercise, being overweight, having a poor uh, dietary habit, all of those things are gonna to lead to other diseases such as high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, which are also tightly tied with the diagnosis of type two diabetes. Uh, Dr. Holliday, what about adolescent diabetes? Are more young people uh, getting diabetes or prediabetes? Yes, the, the research shows that as our lifestyle and our culture becomes much more sedentary and we're, we're on devices more and we're moving less and we're taking advantage of fast food more often, that even younger and younger age groups are now having um, symptoms and having prediabetes and progressing to type 2 diabetes. So this is something for everyone to pay attention to. The last numbers I looked at suggested that Oklahoma ranks uh, in the top 10 or near it in both obesity and in cases of diabetes. What are some things Oklahomans can do right now to avoid a prediabetes diagnosis? The treatment's going to be that, you know, it's going to be like mom and non-apple pie. What you wanna do is take a lower portion of those high calorie diets. You wanna get off the sofa, you wanna push away from the table, that's a good exercise to do as well. You don't have to join a fitness program, you don't have to join a fitness club, but you have to start moving. We want people to move more. If you have prediabetes, you can stop it. You can, you can fix it, so to speak. Uh, is the problem getting worse or do you see some light at the end of the tunnel? We do know that the COVID-19 pandemic in and of itself has exacerbated chronic illnesses. There's um, early indicators that the situation could be a little bit worse. And so that's why we're encouraging people. And there's a sense of urgency and seriousness in this campaign to really uh, become more aware of your risk and to take action. 
Dr. Christopher Holliday with the CDC, Dr. Gerald Harmon, thank you so much. Great information. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for having us.